<clears throat> Between 1964 and 1966, Professor Joseph Weizenbaum at the MIT AI Lab created a program called ELISA <clears throat> that used very simple templated dialogue and pattern matching word substitution algorithms to implement what we would now call a chatbot. The most famous version of ELISA called Doctor simulated a psychoanalyst and was really quite successful of holding uh, fairly lengthy conversations with users, mostly by parroting back those users' words uh, in the form of questions that seemed to be probing deeper into what the user was talking about in the way a psychoanalyst might do. Now, I really enjoyed playing around with Eliza when I was a kid, and I felt that fascination that many people did when interacting with it at that time. <clears throat> it was groundbreaking. But Weizenbaum was very explicit that his program was extremely simple, and it relied on what we might call parlor tricks to make it seem like it was having a conversation with you. Nevertheless, many people became entranced with Eliza and even ascribed intelligence and human-like feelings to the program, much to its creator's astonishment. Professor Weizenbaum himself said, what I had not realized is that extremely short exposures to a relatively simple computer program could induce powerful delusional thinking in quite normal people. Now, this phenomenon was so widespread that famed cognitive scientist Douglas Hofstadter uh, <clears throat> dubbed the term the ELISA effect, which he said refers to, quote, the susceptibility of people to read far more understanding than is warranted into strings of symbols, especially words, strung together by computers, end quote. This tendency can be seen as an example of the broader phenomenon of pareidolia, which is, according to Wikipedia, the tendency for perception to impose a meaningful interpretation on a nebulous stimulus so that one sees an object, a pattern, or meaning where there is none. Pareidolia is most commonly used to describe our instinct to see human faces in clouds, in rocks, on the moon, etc. But its meaning is in fact wider than that, encompasses our tendency toward anthropomorphism, which is to ascribe human characteristics to non-human things. You know, we crave the familiar. It is a survival mechanism for us. And thus, that's why natural selection is programmed as hard to have it. Our humanness is so deeply familiar, our minds seek to perceive it all around us. Now, I'm of the camp that believes that AI technology enjoys particular success in drawing us in and feeling human because of this tendency. We want it to feel human at some deep level. And none of this is to take away from the astonishing advances we see in AI, the magical experiences it can create, and of course, most importantly, the useful things it can do for us. But I believe it's important for us to be aware of our bias and to resist anthropomorphizing algorithms that we know are effectively regurgitating memory of things that humans have written, just in novel, random, but sensible ways. I want to end this video today with a thought-provoking haiku by Douglas Hofstadter. Meaning lies as much in the mind of the reader as in the haiku. Thanks, everyone. That's my thought for now. I'll be back again soon. Take care.